Hi everyone, welcome to the Future is in Evidence dialogue series. These talks with key experts will explore how technology, digitization, and innovation are charting new territory for the monitoring, evaluation, and learning practice. Follow us on Twitter at GI underscore Global Eval, and we're also on LinkedIn at Global Evaluation Initiative. And visit our webpage. Tell us what you think and enjoy the video. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Meckler from the GEI Launchpad, and today I'm joined by Issa Fay, Director of Development Impact Measurement at the International Finance Corporation. Issa is going to help us understand the connections and the opportunities between the impact investing and the monitoring, evaluation, and learning communities. Thanks for joining us, Issa. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Thank you, Jessica, for having me. Looking forward to it. So a recent report from the IFC claims that investors' appetite for impact investing, in which they seek to generate both positive social impact for society alongside strong financial returns, could total as much as $26 trillion. This is huge. Is this an opportunity for male professionals and entrepreneurs? And if so, what challenges might male professionals face when engaging in impact investing? Uh, thank you, Jessica. This is a, a great question. Yeah, that number is impressive. I mean, really. But let's put things in perspective. I mean, that amount of funding could help close the gap in the funds that will be needed to rebuild developing countries after the pandemic. It could help tackle climate change and thereby contribute to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. But more specifically, what I wanted to say is that the market for impact investing is maturing, and we all know. And with now 2.28 trillion currently invested for impact, invested, really invested, not just the intention part of it, and of which we have 636 billion, which is kind of uh, over a quarter, is clearly measured for impact. So there is really a, a market there. There is a window of opportunity for. Uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning entrepreneurs and practitioners to grow the share of investment measure for impact by uh, ensuring, among other things, that the assets invested for impact have identif identifiable contribution and the required measurement systems and tools in place. But to, to talk about the challenges, if you, you want to focus on the challenges, let's say that we've, uh, we've witnessed uh, the, uh, an accelerated growth of the last four or five years of impact investing. Right. And this has brought to us a couple of systemic issues. There are many other issues, but let me just focus on the systemic ones uh, that, that, that kind of have, that are consequential to developing this market. First, there is a growing number of investment vehicles claiming to be impact investment with a diversity of meaning of what it means to be an impact investor. Many of these investors are passive as they typically don't push the market for specific action or type of impact. Impact investing, as I see it, is active and aims to invest in projects and companies who are committed to delivering specific impact, specific type of impact. That's number one. Second, uh, there is a proliferation of metrics to capture impact without clear standards and underlying, uh, underlying their selection. So this plethora of tools and systems really needs to, needs to be... Uh, to be to be harnessed and and, and 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 we need some discipline into making this work and to address these challenges one needs to bring a greater transparency uh, and, and and discipline to the market and that's what uh, isc and others have been trying to do and it involves really developing clear and common metrics and standards and putting in place supportive regulation. We need to come together somehow and converge to some ideas in terms of how do we measure things, how, what are the systems that need to be put in place, and then the regulation that goes with them. So to that fact, this is what IFC has been trying to do uh, in partnership with a core group of asset managers, asset owners, and development financial institutions. We have developed what we call the operating principle for impact in management. Uh, this has been done, uh, launched uh, two years ago, two, three years ago, and now is being describing the essential features of managing funds with the intent to achieve measurable positive social, economic, and environmental impact alongside, alongside financial returns. Bringing out evidence of positive social and environmental impacts 
alongside the more traditional financial returns, requires a pretty significant shift in approach. As a senior professional in the MEL field, do you see any opportunities there for opening up new market seg segments for MEL practitioners? Yeah, yeah, Jessica, of, of course, obviously, I mean, I see a lot of opportunities there. Mm -hmm. But I would like to step back and think about, if I'm talking about the opportunities, well, the shift that needs to happen. I think that there is a substantial amount of shift in terms of mindset and objectives that need to happen for uh, for monitoring and evaluation and learning practitioners to to, to tap into this uh, pent up demand or, or this this opportunity that I'm seeing there. Uh, there will be a need for uh, many uh, professionals and entrepreneurs to start by recognizing that there is a clear difference between the ways the private sector operates vis-a-vis -vis the public sector, where the MLE type of services have been mainly uh, used in, uh, traditionally. We know that ML, in the public sector, we have a long tradition of using uh, monitoring and evaluation and learning uh, capabilities. But now we are venturing to a new market which have its own way of operating and an own uh, kind of culture. And this culture shift and mindset shift is necessary to just put their mind into a different environment where decisions are made on a base of commercial uh, viability and, and so on. So how to marry the need to look at impact on top of commercial and financial viability is something that they will need to open themselves to. And in so doing, it is important to understand that the impact investors in the private sector are much more heterogeneous, uh, both in terms of size and then also in, uh, in terms of the diversity of their impact profile. And for instance, there are private capital funds that are branded as impact or ESG, but they vary greatly uh, in how they understand and report an impact. Uh, somebody will need to reconcile all of this. In, in almost all cases, these new private impact investors have a very different understanding of impact from the, what, uh, from the, the sense that DFI or the DFI community understand it. So mm -hmm. this is something to reconcile and make sure that we have it, uh, uh, the right lenses through which we're looking at impact investing. Another shift that I think should happen is uh, we need to avoid really considering uh, development impact and financial return are two, as two mutually uh, exclusive type of objectives. No, we need to balance them out. We need to bring them together and make some kind of trade-off in such a way that we can achieve impact while uh, making sure, ensuring there is a long-term financial sustainability in the, into our investment and companies. So it will be important for the MEL professional and entrepreneurs to understand their need, the needs on the market and how the market operates. And this is why we need more initiatives like the GIE Launchpad, which is helping build an ecosystem of uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning professionals able to respond to the needs of this new market that we see. That said, I believe that the, the shift in approach will bring a large volume of, of, of uh, uh, demand for, for the monitoring and evaluation practitioners and entrepreneurs who are going to be able to provide new measurement tools and systems that will facilitate the decision making because they, they should, there will be some need for swift decision making uh, based on data and information that needs to be available. So. The market, the, the MLE practitioners should be able to provide those services and go beyond uh, developing framework and system, but also uh, thinking of ways of uh, collecting data to feed those systems and how to report back on those systems. Now, given the need for, for uh, investment at scale and then the need for efficient delivery, uh, I expect the automation tools and the use of big data and artificial intelligence will become prominent. Uh, there's going to be a need, need for system that can automatically uh, translate all reporting requirements into a data collection requirements. The monitoring and evaluation practitioners should leverage their existing systems and, and, and toolkits and learn how to work with data scientists, specialists in machine learning and robotic process automation, as these are teams that will help us really make a difference and, 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 and create something new to the market. That will also satisfy the need for speed and, and, and delivery at, at scale. And I'm, I'm excited by this feature, by the way, where we're getting the logistic and management of impact uh, being more rigorous, efficient, and hopefully less onerous. 
What advice would you give a male entrepreneur trying to do business in the field of impact investing? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. But I, I would say, Jessica, but there is no silver bullet. I don't think there is a blueprint or, I mean, a kind of guide that we one could, could, could lay it out. I would just maybe go with my, my two, three cents, two, I mean, suggestion that would, I would make, uh, I would make to uh, m and uh, professional want, wanting to venture into this new market. One, or first would be, you need to clearly understand the market. And there's a need to engage with the impact investing, uh, impact investors and speaking to them to really understand what their needs are. I have a chance to speak. I have the chance to speak uh, with actual impact investors, and I know that the, their intentions are real. They are responding to a market demand to make an impact with their investment, and they genuinely want to make this this really happen. But they have a different a diversity of ideas, which may be different from what the uh, MEL practitioners could think of, uh, coming from a more uh, public sector kind of setting. Uh, there's that need to to understand the differences and, and, and understand their need. And they need to listen to them. They need to listen to the market and try to understand their objectives and needs so that we can help them put in place the right systems and methods to, to report back and, and be accountable. Uh, second, they need to create value. They need to demonstrate value add. I think that the m and professional entrepreneurs entering this market will need to demonstrate some kind of proof of concept that their services will add value to what the, the market is uh, has uh, already uh, been working on. It is important that uh, there is really a, a, a set of tools and systems put in place to complement the, the different system and tools that they, they have. They need to see the difference that there is something that is value add to, 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 to help them really um, a kind of uh, show that they are real impact investors. They need to see that their way of reporting, their way of, of, of uh, uh, being transparent and, and, and then sharing uh, their, their, the impact that they deliver is really different and make it make a, make, make a, and it's attractive. You need to make sure that the, the, provide, the service they're providing to these impact investors is, is really attractive to them and then can help them really uh, position themselves in this market. Because as we said earlier, there is a lot of variety of, of, of impact uh, systems and tools and, and, and there is a need to really show that there is, there is a kind of a rigor uh, in the way that we report and in the way that we kind of uh, measure impact in the in the center. A third, and I think that this is where the MLE, M, uh, monitoring and evaluation professional will help really mm -hmm. bring that rigor and make sure that you show that there is a difference between real impact investing and uh, and uh, the, the rest of the market. And and last but not, I mean, last of the point that I wanted to make is that there is a need to learn about technology. The, mm -hmm. the MLE type of professional will have to go beyond their comfort zone. But they have to go to, to, to acquire new techniques and tools uh, they need to go meetups with once in a while and learn what new technologies and new business models are there, out there. Uh, we have, for example, remote sensing and, and there is an internet of things whose data could be harnessed to do our tracking and learning. Uh, we have the opportunity to update our methodology to the age of big data. For instance, with satellite imagery, we can see reforestation. We can see deforestation in real time. Mm -hmm. at high levels of granularity and across multiple uh, spectrum. This is a wealth of data and knowledge that we can harness, but we have not incorporated enough this kind of information uh, into our monitoring and evaluation and learning methods. Uh, to do so, we need to understand the data structure of the different pipelines of big data and how they can be synchronized. So there's a whole lot of work, I think, to do to prepare ourselves to the next generation of MLE products to be offered to the impact investing world. Thank you so much for sharing these insights with us, Isa. For everyone watching us today, we hope you enjoyed this conversation and don't forget to check out the other videos of the series available on our webpage.